Hi everyone, I'm here with Kenny from Something Polyglot in sunny Madrid and we are recording two videos about how Kenny learns languages and uh, I hope you all get inspired and you get some tips on how to learn languages. So Kenny, could you tell something about yourself? So I'm originally from Belgium, so my mother tongue is Dutch, just mm -hmm. like you. Mm -hmm. um, I've been living in Madrid for the past six years, it's the reason I also speak Spanish. Uh, I'm a language teacher, I teach Dutch, Flemish, uh, mm -hmm. the Belgian version of Dutch, and then English, Italian and French. <clears throat> French because I'm from Belgium, so we all have to speak the um, French for nine years. Mm. Italian because I've been living, I lived for three years in Italy and my ex-partner uh, was uh, Italian. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then I have a bunch of other languages because languages are a bit my passion. So nice. um, I speak Catalan, Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, uh, German, um, Danish, I kind of speak, Afrikaans also speak, and then I recently started with Greek. Awesome. Yeah, so I've been following Kenny here and there on Instagram and I really like that uh, you talk about all these languages mm -hmm. and that clearly you see that you are really passionate about languages and I really like finding people who do it as a hobby and uh, don't really feel like they have to be competitive at it. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I have to talk to Kenny yeah. so people find out how to progress in languages without feeling the pressure mm -hmm. and all of that. And also, of course, you have a lot of knowledge because you're a language teacher as well. Um, so do you have a certain routine? Do you have a certain approach when it comes to learning your languages? Um... So I always start very slowly because I want to get to know the language and at the beginning it's always very difficult because mm -hmm. it's a new language. So I start oh, some, usually like five minutes a day and after a while like 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes. <clears throat> uh, I, usually, I usually start with Asimil, it's one famous uh, editor that uh, publishes language courses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they offer like every day one lesson. So you do every day one lesson and that, that creates actually a routine if you're able exactly. to follow that routine. And then soon, actually, because you cannot use one resource, I, I start adding other resources like apps. And the moment I feel ready, I start speaking the language, mainly with a tutor or a teacher, because those people, like, they have the patience to help you to listen. They mm -hmm. have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the most important thing is that you feel motivated and that you do things that you like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, mm -hmm. I think lo a lot of people buy a language book and say okay I this is this is it I have to use this one yeah. and then after a while maybe they realize oh I don't like it or it's, it's mm, I don't feel motivated anymore and that's the moment you should say okay I'm, I'm gonna put it aside mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and try something else because awesome. I've had a lot of students say oh I tried one teacher mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't a good fit so I gave up yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah and that's what happened maybe at school or something mm -hmm. but even in that uh, at that moment when I was at school and I had some teachers I didn't really like, I would still study after school mm -hmm. like by myself because I liked it. So indeed, I agree with you that we have to be creative with what we have. You right? have to be creative. And it, for me, it's a lot of trial and error. I mm -hmm. can give you a lot of tips and tricks how to learn a language, but those are my tips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people like flashcards. I, I don't like flashcards. I tried it 10 times. Exactly. It doesn't work for me, but maybe for you, it's like it's something that you can do and can add to your routine. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of trying out what works for you. Even if you start a new language, mm -hmm. sometimes some things you did in the past work for one language and, and exactly. for the new language don't work. So you have to do, it's a continuous trial and error. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think, okay, I, I didn't finish the book, so I... <clears throat> it's a failure. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of books that I finished like only 50%, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. 50% is 50%. If you speak a language 50%, and that that's was wow. It's good fantastic. enough for you to start speaking. Yeah, right? of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you don't have to reach the end of the book to say, okay, it's a success. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just in the middle and say, oh, I'm going to do something else. Or, or, and now yeah. I feel ready to start speaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel guilty when you like use a resource or find a teacher and then find out it doesn't work. Well, no, but I think that's something you have to learn mm -hmm. through experience. I had had a I have I still have a subscription on Buzu because mm -hmm. I thought maybe it's interesting. And after a few months, and, uh, no, I don't like <laughs> this anymore. So I, I still have the subscription, yeah. but I don't yeah. use it anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I try something else and see how it goes. You have a yeah. lot of people use Duolingo. I try. I, I used it a lot for Danish and Catalan. Yeah. But then I got bored and now I don't use it anymore. Exactly. And once exactly. in a while I open it to check if yeah. I can do something. 
to, to yeah. rekindle my, my interest for it. But exactly. if it doesn't work, I say, okay, I'll try something else. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. I know some people who use Duolingo every day and they're super motivated about yeah. that. And then I'm happy to hear that they're motivated. But indeed, there comes a point where they might want to add another resource to start speaking, to yeah. really start seeing how the language is actually used, how it's mm -hmm. actually spoken. So I agree with like experimenting with mm -hmm. these resources. Mm -hmm. Problem with something like Duolingo, for me personally, it's like th th there's competition. Mm -hmm. So, and I think if there is competition, you start comparing yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the only person you have to compare yourself with is yourself. Exactly. So I often look back and I say, okay, three months ago, I wasn't able to say this sentence because uh -huh. I had to look for the words. Exactly. As the only person you should compare yourself with, and the problem is if you have i have a lot of contact with the people who speak languages mm -hmm. who study languages so it's mm -hmm. very difficult not to compare yourself yeah i know but it's mm -hmm. very difficult to know what the st the, the story the, mm -hmm. the the adventure that person is on because you can mm -hmm. have a person mm -hmm. who's very fluent in a language but maybe that person has been studying an entire year five hours a day i know <laughs> someone who studied japanese for 16 hours a day yeah <laughs> so no, then <laughs> he said oh i got fluent in one year and i'm like yeah wow yeah. how and then he explains i was like oh okay still amazing amazing mm -hmm. uh performance but it doesn't fit everyone that's for sure no because i could easily compare myself to other people for greek for i started a year ago i'm mm -hmm. still at a1 mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. And it's it's not a problem because I'm, I'm I'm having fun. Yeah, I like seeing connections between languages, and Greek is a language that has influenced almost exactly. all Indo-European languages. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm having fun, and for me, the most important thing is that that I'm, I want to enjoy myself. Yeah, I try Japanese, and somewhere I lost my motivation, and I said I stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe one day I still have exactly. all the books. I will start over again. Yeah. So yeah. it's not. I think some people say, "Oh, it's, uh, what a waste of time!" Mm -hmm. It's never a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I see somebody who speaks uh, Japanese, I can say, "Watashi wa kani desu." Yeah, exactly. Maybe. You can say something. You know a little bit about their culture. Mm -hmm. You know, sugoi and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know some of the things. I agree with you. So like. I was watching an Arabic movie um, yesterday mm -hmm. and I've only studied Arabic for three weeks then indeed like left it for a bit because mm -hmm. life got hectic and then when I was watching the movie I was still so happy to recognize the sounds and to understand why they make mm -hmm. those sounds because there's some really big sounds but then I understood that mm -hmm. and um, that was really cool and I recognized some words so we never lose when it comes to culture mm -hmm. and knowledge so I agree now I know you speak multiple languages mm -hmm. and you love so many languages mm -hmm. and what should someone do or or like when we take it back to you again mm -hmm. what works for you when you want to learn so many languages do you do that all in one day you spread it out no. over the week or per period per month <clears throat> so now for example i'm doing mainly greek i had last the past two months I had the Brazilian Portuguese mm -hmm. so I fo mainly focus on one language why is it Greek now because I have a very low level mm -hmm. and when you have a very low level <laughs> autumn. Autumn, yeah, <laughs> also in Madrid and uh, when you have a very low level it's easy to lose that level so I think once you reach B1 mm -hmm. uh, B2 level intermediate level it's easier to maintain without mm -hmm. doing a lot of um, studying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why I focus on Greek and then I have also some languages that show up Mm -hmm. um, it's like, for example, I, I really love Catalan, so I'm focusing also to. Yeah, I have a high level of Catalan, but mm -hmm. I want to make it even more better. Yeah. So I'm focusing on on that language. Uh -huh. But to maintain all those languages, I think I have ten or eleven now. Yeah. What I do, but this is very personal. I'm I'm interested in what's going on in the world, so I list. I go to the gym every day, and I listen to the news mm -hmm. in all those languages. Mm -hmm. So I have my phone programs mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I start with Catalan, and then. Uh, Portuguese, Danish, English, French, Spanish, Italian. But by apps or how have you programmed that? So I have an uh, Android. I have an Android, and then you have Google Assistant. But I think you can install it also on iPhone. Mm -hmm. And then you have a system where you just say uh, play the latest news, and you can program with, with uh, the, the radio news actually. Yeah. And you can choose which uh, one. You can have CNN, BBC, oh, uh, nice. Radio France Internationale, uh, NOS, for yeah, example, yeah, the Dutch yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, radio. And it's programmed. And I just say, play the latest news. And it starts. Okay, I have 10 languages. So that takes an yeah. hour. That's the yeah, time I'm at the gym. Sure. So not a lot of music no. <laughs> at the gym. No. But for me, I have like a B1, maybe B2 on a good day in Brazilian, Portuguese and German. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't really have to study it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to maintain my level. No, and the I fact agree. that I can listen to mm -hmm. it 
for five, 10 minutes every day means that it's easier to maintain that level. For sure. A little bit of exposure. Um, but this is a bit, yeah, when you speak multiple languages, you have to find a way to, to maintain them. And that's not always easy when you're working full time, when, you mm -hmm. uh, when you're married, when you're children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a bit your own way to do that. It, exactly. I think it can be also listening to music. Yeah. Uh, or reading articles in the languages. Mm -hmm. For me mm -hmm. personally, what works, I like podcasts, I like radio, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's my thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. I do think that the power of listening is mm -hmm. um, sometimes underestimated. So when people say, oh, I've lost German or I've lost my French, I've mm -hmm. lost my whatever language, I'm always like, I don't believe you. It's still there uh, in the back of weeks. your head. Not two and weeks. Exactly. Two weeks. In two you, weeks, it's, it's, it's just, almost all back. Exactly. You just experience. need to expose to yourself to the language again. Mm -hmm. And especially with listening to the radio, you hear so many common words. Mm -hmm. the, the pronunciation comes back. Yeah. So all the most important words you'll hear again. And then you'll realize that actually you still know the language. You still yeah, understand yeah, yeah. it. And then you can start to speak again. Mm -hmm. I agree. Now... What I really like is that you say, okay, this is what works for me. Not mm. everyone has to listen to all their languages on a yeah. daily basis. That's yeah, what Kenny that's does, everyone. It has to be a bit crazy. But I do think it's worth trying it out. Mm. See what works for you. And maybe someone knows four language or languages or they want to focus on four mm. languages only. And if they listen to it 15 minutes a day, it does make a huge impact. So, yeah, yeah I think I, yeah. it's... A lot of people say, okay, watch something on Netflix. There are a lot of TV series. But when you watch something, your exposure is a bit limited because yeah. there's a lot of things going on. And you also have the subtitles that help you, of course. Um, and then you have the image. Mm -hmm. While when you're listening, you can only focus on what's being said. Mm -hmm. And you can focus more on the pronunciation. Definitely. And it's way easier to say, oh, I didn't, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm going to go back like 15 seconds or 20 exactly. seconds on, on the Netflix. It's a bit, especially oh, if you're watching yeah, together with someone. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> no, no, wait, one wait. One, one, I didn't get that word. <laughs> so yeah. I think, and there is a lot of material available uh, depending on the language um, also. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's a bit, if you have a low level and the language is not so popular or not many no, not many speakers for example for danish i have a lot mm -hmm. of difficulties finding material for my level mm -hmm. i cannot understand mm -hmm. i listen to the news but i know like uh, biden corona yeah okay <laughs> yeah. i know what's going on yeah uh, but i cannot understand it 100 percent no and danish is not so it's not a big language mm -hmm. there's not a lot mm -hmm. of people who study it so the mm -hmm. material is limited it's mm -hmm. not like english for english no. you can yeah uh, find exactly. material about any like subject slow, in any language right? and then any slow level German, slow French. Yeah, you yeah. can find but if you study some a, a certain language that's not so popular it's sometimes difficult to find material the moment mm -hmm. you reach like high b1 mm -hmm. b2 level you actually can use everything that's mm -hmm. available and you look mm -hmm. for something you're interested in exactly mm -hmm. so that's how you maintain your languages and mm -hmm. i think it also really depends on your expectations so mm -hmm. i know someone who did something similar mm -hmm. and this person mentions like a burnout yeah and i'm like oh but it's your hobby like you know be careful so then how do you manage your expectations in this one hour of listening to the news? Do you expect to learn new words? Do you expect mm. to get something out of it? Or um, I think w it, when you do it every day, you'll start recognizing where because in the mm -hmm. news it, they talk a lot about the same stuff. Definitely. And so you will start rec. Of course, on, on a short term, you always have to see it on the long term. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to say, okay, one month ago, I didn't understand what was going on. Now, mm -hmm. now I'm able to understand, okay, mm -hmm. this is probably about the elections in the United mm -hmm. States mm -hmm. or something. And one thing I do, I just first listen to languages, to the news and languages, I master better. So mm -hmm. I already know, okay, they're talking about the elect today, oh, they're talking nice. about elections in the United States. There is Corona in China again. Yeah. So I know they're going to probably mention in the other news because they talk about the international news. And that helps. Yeah, smart. And expectation, I don't think really I have like, I, I just want to uh, move forward, mm -hmm. but I know, so um, a lot of people say, okay, language learning, when you're a polyglot, that's easy. Oh, it's, it's not easy. No. It's never easy. No. But I think what you realize when you start with language number eight or, or nine or ten, you know it's going, not going to be easy. And no, you know, okay, exactly. I'm not going to give up because exactly. it, this is normal. Mm -hmm. When I... Mm -hmm. 
as a teacher, I'm also more like sometimes a coach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of my experience. And often I can see the frustration. Mm -hmm. I have students who cried during my lesson. Yeah. And then I say, yeah, Nate, this is normal. I have exactly the same yeah. with, with my languages at the start. Yeah. That's why yeah. I like as a teacher that I have that, that language I'm starting oh, with sure. to mm -hmm. also like understand how my students sometimes feel exactly mm -hmm. exactly well that's awesome i'm so excited <laughs> about this um you can find kenny's links underneath this video as well if you're looking for some classes in italian or flemish mm -hmm. which is the same pretty the same as dutch right yeah it's a bit of difference between american english and british english exactly in my opinion. exactly mm -hmm. so an english and what is the other language french, french you yeah. teach right also mm -hmm. and we'll be talking in another video about uh well, basically, we'll be making a multilingual video, mm -hmm. so check it out here. And um, in that video, we will be talking more about Kenny's languages, how he has learned them and all of that, but then in multiple languages. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Yes, wonderful. <laughs>